Yep, I believe that's exactly it, or at least how I see it. In cartoons, it's the holds that tell the story. The two things I'm keeping in mind are, what is his emotional intent, and what amount of force brings him to each one of these moments. So, while I'm building these poses, I'll be making decisions on how far I can exaggerate each pose for entertainment's sake, while still retaining a readable attitude for empathy's sake. Remember, even in cartoons, your audience's feeling of empathy with the character is still your ultimate goal. And so, I'll work these poses in grueling detail. The more I do now, the happier I'll be later. All right, let's get in there and start looking at these story poses. So all I've done is work with the same plan that I did when I was doing my sketches. I wanna start with these three sort of tent pole story poses, these basic big attitude changes that he makes, um, and look to see that I am one, that I'm getting the intent across of the character, um, that everything in his body shows me graphically, lets my audience read what he is feeling in the strongest way at that moment. And I want to also get the timing worked out. So if you remember the three little poses that I came up with um, were these three basic beats of the story, the biggest beats of the story, which was his opening dejected pose, his big excited pose, and his little melt into, uh, you know, love. Now, all this takes into account all the things that I saw in myself in the video. Um, the, this particular arch of the spine here, the, the weight that it's putting, you know, where I put my weight on my knee and how that might affect it and how that kind of balances on the fulcrum of my thigh. I've also done this thing where I've curled his foot in a little bit, which I saw in my video reference, um, which is kind of the effect of helping it stay on the knee. This toe I've pointed up, one, because of the proportions of the rig, but also that's kind of what I would do to keep my foothold there, I'd kind of lift that knee up and, and give it a little more, you know, lift this leg up and give it a little more of an ability to hold that elbow. Um, bent this wrist nicely and stuck it onto the cheek. In fact, I've even manipulated the smile in here so that the cheek appears to be pushed up under the weight of my fist. Um, I've got really clear, simple um, graphics on the eyes so you can tell that I'm looking away from camera, you know, kind of in a daydreamy state. Um, and this arm being a nice, smooth curve, relaxed curve is a little bit of a hunch in the shoulders. Um, but I've kept his face um, at camera a little bit more than I was in my video reference, just because I want the audience to be able to connect instantly. So all of these ingredients to me make for a nice held opening pose. I can read within the first eight frames. My audience can read, I hope, what is uh, happening inside of his mood. Um, in this one, um, there is a nice sense of rigidity that's different from the relaxed weightiness of the last pose. And I want to walk you through some of the things I got from the video reference and some of the things that I've pushed already. I'm already starting to push these poses based on the character's desire, what they're trying to get, what they intend to do by changing their body shape this much. So they're, you know, the feet plant where they're going to plant and there is this straight, you know, shot of force up the spine. Um, up at the top is where I start to curve it back a little bit. Um, you know, that, that he's, because he's trying to push himself towards what he sees. And in my mind, he's trying to push his heart towards what he sees a little bit. So I wanted to get that chest up and out. But as this line of action continues up through the body, I made the choice to break it right there at the neck. Um, because the most important part I think of this pose is getting his face pushed towards what he can see. He wants to be attentive and, you know, excited inside of his own space, but he does want to get as close as he can. So that neck is going to, I've got that neck sticking out. I've opened up the, the facial features as much as I could without really breaking it. Um, you know, got these eyebrows up, still anchored the, the iris and the pupil in the bottom lid so that I can create this um, really easy to read graphic in the whites of his eyes, but I've cranked those eyelids up. Excitement. Eyelids high is a great way to see excitement in your character, really in any person. And then I've created this um, smile in there that is 
to me, a very um, unfiltered look of joy and awe is what I wanted. The joy comes from the, the teeth, the top teeth showing right there. Sincere smiles, real smiles of joy. Um, we expose our top teeth and we actually hide our bottom teeth. You, there's a little bit of a roll in on that lip down there. So he's, he's really lifting that whole face up and showing those top teeth. But the way that I've held it back into a feeling of awe is that I've kept these corners rounded. He doesn't have that nice pointy, um, joyous smile. He's got a look of, of awe sort of mixed in with it. So I really, knowing that this is going to hold for a little bit, I really want to, I really want that to, to be able to read those two, um, combined emotions to create this facial feature recipe, this facial expression recipe. Um, and so another, um, thing that I've done that has gone beyond my video reference that I pushed beyond it is what's happening here with the hands. Um, if you remember in my reference, if I scrub forward to where I'm up on the table, I am flat palmed and I've got a great grip and my fingers are spreading out a little bit and I can really feel a nice weight on those arms. But, um, I thought how this pose is launching upwards. How much more can I get that feeling of, of force upwards like that and that and, and increase the level of excitement? Well, here's what I chose to do. The, the, his, Jose's arms are not quite long enough to reach that table. The length of his torso is long. So for his arms to be able to get that wrist all the way down to the table, I really would have had to slump those shoulders down. So I made this choice and I think it's, and I think it works. Um, I lifted these shoulders up so that there is an excited hunch to them, an anticipatory hunch. And I've, in, I've put him on his fingers. I'm pushing him up all the way to his fingertips. I've gone to the extreme of the point on, the, at, on those arms that he can rest. And that would be that very last knuckle of his fingertips. So what I've done to the curve of this is barely hyperextended that elbow. And so that it flows a little bit more into that wrist. Um, and these fingers, all of them, are hyperextending back as if there's pressure on them. And I've exaggerated the bend on that third knuckle so you can really feel a sense of weight um, pushing down. You know, he's push, I guess pushing against that table. Um, and got that little tiny flex on the thumb too. Now that the thumb's up in the air, it can't just hang there because every little part of that body is gonna help communicate to your audience all that muscle tension and all that excitement that's going on in him. So if the last one is as rigid and structurally sound and filled with um, emotional excitement and muscular tension as it can be. I want to surprise my audience by going to the for the extreme, the other extreme, the opposite extreme, and let every ounce of muscle tension and energy leave his body. For as much as there was in this pose, I want the negative value of it in the next one. That, that going to that extreme, creating that surprise is gonna get me that slapstick cartoon humor that I wanna get out of it. So let's see what I was thinking of when I did this. So, you know, I, I as you notice in the body, um, I still have this, you know, really fluid S shape through it, but it's clearly being, being created by the forces of gravity, not by the forces in his body. Yes, he has a spine in there that kind of dictates the kind of curve that the spine does. But once that chest passes the table, gravity pulls down on those hips. And oh, so I want to create that sense of a sack of flour hanging over the edge of a table. You know, that's, you know, if you did, if you were doing a little flour sack, um, you know, animation, you would let that weight really droop down, let gravity really pull it down. Thank you.